Now, before we get too far into all the nitty gritty of how we do this partial fractions thing, I got to point out that there's one thing that you always have to make sure of before you do any of the rest of it. Okay, we're going to be trying to break these things up into sums of fractions like this. And for the moment, we're just doing two. If we had a bigger polynomial on the bottom, we might end up with three or four of these things added together. But the idea is that we're always trying to to rewrite these fractions in a way that the power in the numerator is well, I, I, my first preference is that I have just a constant divided by some linear factor. Constant divided by a linear factor. And the thing is, the power in the numerator is less than the power in the denominator. And when I combine these fractions together, um, when I combine these fractions together, I've got a times x minus r2 plus b times x minus r1 over the product of those two. I don't know what r1 and r2, but the point is there's two values that you get when you factor. Um, whoa, what's going on here? Why is this jumping and doing all these different things? Uh, there we go. X minus R2. So if I add these two together with a common denominator, I get this. And notice that the numerator, if I distribute that out, that there's X's and there's constants. So there's A plus B times X, and there's minus a r1 minus b r2 for constants on the top and you've got this denominator whatever it is well it's quadratic actually is what it is it's x squared minus r1 plus r2 x plus r1 times r2 the point being though this is quadratic in the bottom and it's linear in the top so the when I'm doing one of these partial fractions, I've got to make sure that I'm starting with a fraction where the polynomial in the numerator is a smaller degree than the polynomial in the denominator, because I'm never going to get it otherwise. Okay, so for instance, um, I'm going to attempt to do one. Well, I'm going to show you what you do when when it's bigger. So let's take a look at um, x cubed plus x squared minus x. And I think I want this to be minus 1 over x squared plus 2x minus 15. Cubic on the top, quadratic on the bottom. Okay, I got a bigger a bigger power in the numerator than the denominator. So the first thing I have to do is I've got to rewrite this fraction by using a long division. Um, so I'm going to divide x squared plus 2x minus 15 into x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. Okay. You may have learned this in an algebra class. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, I look the way I do it is I look at the biggest power here and the biggest power there. How many times do I have to multiply? What do I have to multiply x squared by to get x cubed? Well, I've got to multiply by x. So then I take that x and I multiply it by everything here. This would be x cubed plus 2x squared minus 15x. I then subtract. And by subtracting, what I generally do is I change the signs and add. So I'm going to change this to a minus sign. I'm going to change that to a minus sign. I'm going to change that to a plus sign. And then I'm going to add. So those go away. That, that's what I wanted to have happen. And then I've got an x squared minus 2x squared. So that's going to be a minus x squared. And I've got a minus x minus fifth no, minus x plus 15x, which is a plus 14x. And then it's like, OK, now what do I need to multiply x squared to get negative x squared? Well, I'm going to need to multiply by negative 1. So negative 1 times that is minus x squared minus 2x plus 15 and there's that minus 1 that comes down here again I now have to subtract and by subtracting what I do generally is I change the signs and add so subtracting this bottom one I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna add up to get um, those go away this is a 16x why did I grab that color let's see if I can grab color I really wanted. There we go. 16x minus 16. This is now a smaller um, power than 
that one, and so this doesn't go in anymore. Um, and actually, then I just write it as 16x minus 16 over x squared plus 2x minus 15. And notice, actually, if I were to take this and multiply it by that, just like I did in all the last steps, the denominators would cancel out, and I'd get 16x minus 16, 0 left over, so I've divided it in. The point being, this fraction that I started with is equal to x minus 1 plus 16x minus 16 over that same denominator that I started with. Okay. So if I was trying to integrate this dx, that's the same thing as integrating this dx. The x minus 1 is easy to integrate, x squared over 2 minus x, and then I've got to do this thing. But now I've got a fraction with the same denominator I started with, but now the numerator is a smaller degree. This is just first degree where the denominator is second degree. So I have this, this x minus 1, and then I've got to break this thing up. So I'm just looking now at the 16x minus 16 over x squared plus 2x minus 15. And just for practice here, we'll, we'll do this one here. Uh, I'm going to factor that denominator. Um, so this is 16x minus 16. The denominator factors into, I think if I use a 5 and a 3, make this one plus, make that one minus. Yeah. Okay. So then I'm going to take this thing. and split it up into two fractions added together where I use each denominator there. Those are two distinct things. This is the, there's different situations we might find ourselves in and the, the nicest one is when your factors are all different from each other. We'll look at all the different possibilities uh, in subsequent videos. But for right now I've got two different factors. I use those as my denominators and I put constants over the top of them. Okay. Multiplying both sides by this denominator gives me just the numerator here, 16x minus 16. Um, this denominator times the first fraction, the x plus 5s cancel out, leaving a times x minus 3. This denominator times that fraction, the x minus 3s cancel out, leaving me just a b times x plus 5. Okay. And again, at this stage, you have your choice. Which way would you rather do it? Would you rather plug in values for x, or would you rather... Um, multiply this out and compare coefficients. Um, like I've said, when I was learning this, I liked multiplying it out, comparing coefficients. Um, nowadays, I much prefer to plug values of x in. In fact, I'm going to let x equal 3. So I've got 16 times 3 minus 16 equals a times 0 plus b times 8. Um, so if I factor 16 out of there, that would be 16 times 3 minus 1, so 16 times 2. So 32 equals 8b. Dividing by 8, I've got b equals 4. Okay. And then I want to plug in a minus 5, I think. So I'm going to let x equal minus 5. And Um, so I've got 16 times minus 5 minus 16 equals a times, I plug in a minus 5, minus 5 minus 3 is minus 8, uh, plus 0. Why did that just jump weird on me? Uh, I see why it jumped weird. So, um... Yeah, this is, what's that? Well, actually, I would do it this way. I'd factor out a 16 and say this is 16 times negative 6. So minus 96, minus 96 equals minus 8a. So a is equal to 96 divided by 8, which is 12. So I've got b equals 4 and a equals 12. Let's see, a was used over top of the x plus 5, so I've got 12 over x plus 5, and I've got 
b over x minus 3, okay, and the b was 4, plus 4 over x minus 3. I also have the x minus 1 that we got when we did long division, right? Where was that? Blah, 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 way up here somewhere. Yes, there was x minus 1 plus this fraction. We've now rewritten this fraction. So the integral of this original thing with the cubic numerator and the quadratic denominator is equal to the integral of all of this stuff. Okay. This one is just x squared over 2 minus x. This one you're going to do u substitution with u equal to the bottom, 12 over. Um, so I'm going to end up with a 12 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 5. And here I'm going to end up with a 4 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3 plus a constant. You've got to have the power in the numerator less than the power in the denominator. If the power in the numerator is bigger, do long division first. You'll get a polynomial piece and then deal with what's left.